Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome to the very first video of Fishing PA or Reeling PA. I haven't really gotten the name figured out yet. So if you want to help me out, go ahead and drop some comments down below to get this started. But anyways, we are prepping for the season opener for trout here in Pennsylvania. This season opener though is only open to, I believe it is the 18 southeast counties of Pennsylvania. And then they'll have two weeks of open season and then the rest of the state will hit up after that two weeks is expired and it'll be statewide trout season. But we are going to be prepping today. I have to get my rod ready to go. I have to make sure that all my power bait is still good from last year. If it is, then we're good to go. If not, then I'll go to the store and buy some. We got to get some night, night crawlers. Well, not night crawlers, blood worms because they're a little bit smaller and trout don't necessarily want a monster night crawler. But anyways, we're going to go get that stuff prepped. we got to go get my waders prepped and make sure that I have all my gear, my license, everything like that. And all right, let's get to it. We're going to start fixing up my rod, getting that ready to go, and cleaning up the line and things like that so we can get ready to get to the creek in the morning, which you guys will be there for me for opening day. All right, guys, let's get to it. All right, guys, so the first thing that I need to do, like I said, is get my rod prepped. Now for me, I use a fly rod. Uh, honestly, if you're a fisherman and you haven't tried trout fishing with a fly rod, you really have to do it. It is so much fun because even though you might only have a 10 inch trout on there, it feels like you're fighting a whale. It's just really awesome because of the, the sensitivity on the fly rod. It just makes it more of a energizing, more adrenaline filled fishing experience. But what we have to do is prep it. So this is a Eagle Claw six and a half foot rod. I honestly forget the name of the reel that I have, but fly rod uses this floating line. And if you don't fish, I don't fish as much as I probably should, but when you keep the line spooled up like this, uh, it tends to collect dirt in there from the creek. And it also makes the line have almost that coil to it. So then when you go to cast out, it gets all spooled up in the water. So the best way to clean all this up is I'm getting hot soapy water together and what we're going to do is strip all the line off into here and then we're going to reel it all back in but as we reel it we're going to take a paper towel and dry it off and pull off the dirt and I'll be able to show you guys at the end what kind of dirt we're looking at so we're just going to jump right into this so I can get it done we got a lot of prepping to do and hopefully the weather dies down I've been wanting to do that range day for you guys but it's been raining every day of spring so far so all right Let's go ahead and get this fly rod done. Alright guys, so we got done with that. Hopefully the camera can pick it up. The little lines. So my line wasn't too dirty. You can see these lines going through the paper here. But now that it's cleaned up, that should take, it should get rid of that, that kink that's on the line. Plus when you clean it, it helps them flow through the eyelets of your rod a lot smoother. Um, and if you want to, I shouldn't have to, I usually do it every other year, is you can get this, I almost dropped the camera. You can get this stuff called fly line dressing, and it's like a, uh, it's almost like a sealer that you put on. It's almost like a, it's a paste. And when you put it on, it prevents your line from sinking. Cause usually this is all, it's all floating line. You want it to float. But when you do that, you also have the, uh, the leader line here that goes all the way out. And usually I put it about five feet till it hits my hook. And then that gives me plenty of play. Then if I need to, I can replace that. And the leaders, usually they're tapered. So once you start getting out towards the end, the line gets a lot thicker. And then once you get to a certain point, then you'll start wanting to be like, okay, I'm going to change out the leader. So that way you have the very tip of it and the line's thin. I only use about two, two to three pound tests for trout because it makes it more of a challenge because you don't want to overflight the fish and then just drag it in. You want to actually make it a little bit more of a challenge. So all right, the rod is good. I'm gonna go ahead and wipe it down and then we're gonna go prep all the rest of my gear and we'll get to it. Oh. 
All right. Well, guys, back up here at the house. We're back at the garage. So, waiters. Put these out here earlier. The waiters are good to go. And any of you guys that don't fish much or go in the water, these are just some Ducks Unlimited neoprene. So we got those prepped, tried them on. I did put on a little bit of winter weight so they fit like freaking skinny jeans. But here's the rest of the year. All right guys, so we're gonna just go over the basic gear that I usually take out in the creek with me. I usually keep all of this stuff in a storage tote so I'm not free carrying all of this and risking it getting lost somehow. So I'm gonna be digging this out of the crate as we go. So first I got a, this is just a standard hunting hat, but what I do is on the back of this is my fishing license, which in PA you always have to have this displayed uh, just in case a warden happens to go by, they wanna make sure that you are properly licensed and good to fish. And along with getting a fishing tag here in Pennsylvania, you need to get a trout salmon permit. And also if you plan to fish way more north up towards the Great Lakes, uh, you can get a Lake Erie stamp to go with that so that way you can fish for trout up there. And along with the hat, I have my polarized sunglasses. Polarized sunglasses typically help you when you're looking in the creek. They take away some of that sun glare so that way you can actually see in the water and usually you can see the fish. That's what makes it really nice. All right, on to the next. We have a creel. Now a creel is basically a fisherman's man purse. Easy enough. And what I usually do with this is I carry all my essential gear that I'm gonna need in the water with me at all times. Uh, my tote, I usually keep extras. I don't keep all my gear uh, in this creel with me because then it's just too bulky. So first piece of business that we have is I keep it on a carabiner, but I have a net. Uh, just in case I can't get grip on that fish, I can hook in the net, maybe walk over to a bank to sit my rod down, unhook it, and there we go. So I have a net. Along with that, I have this carabiner here that has three pieces of equipment on it. I have hemostats, which are just like needle nose pliers, and they're really good for pulling the hook out of the fish and things like that, because trout have very small mouths, so a small set of these is gonna be really nice. I have a hook file in case I start to dull up my hooks or bend them in any way, just being out on the water. And then I have a set of nail clippers to trim the line if I need to put a hook on or if I need to cut a hook out of a fish's mouth. So there is that. This is a piece that you guys can actually just get from a grocery store. Is I keep a grocery bag in here to put the fish in. I usually keep two of these just in case I clean the fish out and I need to take them home with me. I use one bag to put the fish in, one bag to put the guts in. That way I'm not just throwing them on someone's creek side and then that risks the attraction of any sort of predators. Even though usually where I'm fishing, it's usually raccoons. That's about anything. Uh, along with that, I have the fillet knife, which speaks for itself. And when it comes to bait, uh, I usually, in this time of year, I use worms typically because with the trout being in cold water, they aren't as active for top water um, baits, like flies. So I usually use worms, which I have to go pick them up at the store here before we hit the creek in the morning. But I use Powerbait. Uh, Powerbait has a trout uh, formula you can usually get. And for me up here in PA, I try to use bright colors just because it attracts the fish better. Now for mine, I have this fluorescent green with glitter. And the little bit of glitter helps give it a little bit of shine to it and attract the fish more. I have a fluorescent orange. And I usually get this in plain or I get it with glitter. And then along with that, I have this mustard color. They just call it yellow power bait. And this has sparkles in it too. And then like I was saying with the flies, I do have these, which these are actually all homemade flies that I made about a year ago. They usually hold up pretty good. I don't tend to do a lot of uh, top water for trout just because a lot of the creeks here in PA are not that open and it's really hard to fly fish in. So you'll understand, I am using a fly rod, but you'll see how I fish tomorrow and you'll understand it a lot better. So stay tuned for tomorrow's episode. And last but not least, I have, these are film canisters. What I use these for is to store my split shot, 
which is just a little just little weights to put on the line if you're if you're new to this and split shot they're sometimes they're very hard to come by but getting these little containers is very very nice uh, it makes it a lot easier to store because it's all in one place and it's very small and very easy to keep in your creel and then I have this one here which is filled with my hooks and my hooks I usually use I believe it is a number 16 which as you saw in the other video these hooks are incredibly tiny so if you get the chance to mess around with them try and tie your hook on at home because when you're going in the creek and this is your first time putting a hook like this on at this size it's a little bit of a pain just being in the creek trying to tie it they're very small and I understand that it is hard to use them sometimes but that is it you just want a small hook and another thing too going with the small hook is when you get worms do not get night crawlers uh, for trout they typically don't go after the very big night crawlers I usually get blood worms and they're usually very very small and they're easy to hide on these hooks and when I do it I always try to hide the hook as best I can whether that means I wrap the hook multiple times with the worm and then hook it again so that way it doesn't come off or if I kind of thread the hook into the worm and cover the entire thing you just want to keep it hidden and the smaller worm works really good for that and that here should be about it uh, I have my waders prepped um, I have a Oh, actually, I'm gonna end it. I have this belt that I use. This has a worm box on it, and it also has this attachment here for power bait. So here, I'll show you guys this. If I take the cap off the power bait, this screws right here into the bottom. And then whenever I have this on my belt, very easy to access, flip the lid open, get a glob of power bait out, put it on my hook, and I'm good to go. So there is that. And last but not least, this is just a clothing thing that I always do is I always keep a nice rain shell in my box just in case any bad weather happens to come. If you start to see dark clouds, it wouldn't hurt to throw this on. And if you do, make sure it's lightweight that way too. If you're fishing in the summer or late spring when the weather's getting warmer, you're not sweating your ass off in the creek. So there is that. And that is going to wrap it up for this. Uh, all this stuff is my essential gear that I take in the creek. Uh, I'm not sure what you guys take. I'm not sure if you guys go in the creeks. If you're not on the creek, maybe you can just keep a tackle box on the edge with you and that'll work for you. But all this is what goes in my creel and I have this on me at all times. So all right guys, I hope you like this video and I hope it's informative to help you guys get prepped for your trout season in whatever state you are watching this from. And if you're watching this here in PA, we have, I believe it is 18 southeast counties of Pennsylvania that are open for I believe it is hip hop. You're, you can come in. It's your garage anyway. Oh, yeah. <laughs> but uh, with all this, I hope this can get you prepped for the statewide season here in PA, which opens up in two weeks. The southeast counties are only open up for the two weeks prior to the statewide season. And we're going to be hitting up that basically preseason of trout. And that's where we're going to go from there. So, right, guys, like I said, hope you like this video. I hope you can comment below with any possible names for the fishing series that I want to get started here in PA. And along with that, hit that subscribe button and along with that little bell next to it so you get notifications on the newest videos that come out. And I'll catch you guys on the next one, which will be tomorrow. We'll be at the creek at 8 a.m. when the season opens. We'll be up in beautiful Perry County, Pennsylvania, which hopefully the weather is nicer than it is today because it has been raining and windy. So, all right, guys, I'll see you in the creek tomorrow. So stay tuned.